Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today we're taking our first steps into Sinnoh to ask the question, can you beat Pokemon Platinum with only Mime Jr.? This could be difficult. The baby Pokemon has the lowest HP of any Gen 4 Pokemon, paired with a pretty bad defense. Any physical hit could spell the end. On top of that, we're playing a game with a Ghost-type Gym Leader, a Steel-type Gym Leader, a Bug-type Elite 4 member, and an evil team who use a crap ton of Dark types. That all seems less than ideal for a pure Psychic type. All of the usual challenge rules apply here. We can't use items in battle, we can only use Mime Jr. to battle, and we're allowed to use HM Slaves outside of battle. Obviously, we had to insert Mime Jr. in place of one of the original starters to make this challenge possible. With the difficulty of this task already, I decided to replace Turtwig. That gives us the easiest rival battles, with Barry recruiting three Pokemon who are weak to Psychic-type moves. Our first battle against him goes off without a hitch, and after checking out our stats and ability, we're ready to move on. Our ability reduces the power of super effective moves, which will definitely come in handy later on. In Sand Gem Town, we get the opportunity to give our Mime Jr. a nickname, and we name her Sunday, then move on to our second battle with Barry. For this playthrough, I'm going to try my best to keep Sunday at a reasonable level to see just how good Mime Jr. can be. Barry has added a Starly to his team since we last met, but it can only lower our attack pointlessly before going down to confusion. Chimchar fares a little better, chipping away almost half of Sunday's HP before falling to our only attack. After that, it's an easy road to Orberg City. Once we found Rourke in Orberg Mine, he returns to the gym and agrees to battle us. The Rock-type gym leader leads off with a level 12 Geodude. With Rourke's team only knowing physical attacks, we set up a barrier to start the battle. With our defense up two stages, I'm a little more confident. One confusion almost wipes out Geodude, but Rourke uses a potion to heal him up. It's ultimately pretty pointless as we knock him out with a second confusion. Cranidos is up next. The level 14 has a 125 base attack and a super effective move in pursuit. Luckily, Cranidos has low special defense, so we only need to survive one hit before Sunday can take him down. Without our defense raised, this battle would probably be over now. Rourke's final Pokemon is his level 12 Onyx. Again, we're in good shape just because we're a special attacker. Sunday takes out Onyx with two confusions and lives on 10 HP. When you consider the fact that we went in at the same level as Rourke's Ace, it's pretty impressive that we were able to earn our first gym badge here. I may have overestimated Sunday though, it didn't take long to come back down to Earth. In Floro Mimeto, we cross paths with a Galactic Grunt with a Stunky. Without confusion available to us, we just about scrape through the battle with 8 HP remaining and poison coursing through our tiny body. Unfortunately, we don't have any chance to heal up and have to go right into another battle. Sunday manages to wipe out both of the Grunt Zubats without taking a hit and just before going down to poison. Somehow, we've made it through. Those were just Grunts though. Galactic Commander Mars is up next. She only has two Pokemon, the first of which is Zubat who goes down to one confusion. Her second Pokemon is Perugly though. She pairs up Fake Out and Faint Attack to obliterate Mime Jr. before she can even get a hit in. That wasn't great. I'll save you the trouble of seeing attempts 2 through 10 and skip to the point where I figured out the correct strategy. Once we've maxed out our defense with Barrier, we can knock out Zubat and move on to Perugly. With our defenses up, we're able to take her down before we fall to faint attack. This took forever, and our first meeting with Team Galactic hasn't filled me with confidence. We're done with them for now though, so it's time to leave Valley Windworks and head through Eternal Forest with Cheryl. Nothing much happens until we get to Eternal City though. We meet Cynthia who gives us the HM for cut after talking about... something? I, I'm gonna be honest, I, I sorta of zoned out. Anyway, time to face off against the Eternal City Gym Leader. For the battle with Gardenia, we got Sunday up to level 25 and learned Psybeam. That's enough to deal with the turret which she sends out first. At level 20, it should really have evolved into a Grodel by now, but I'm not going to complain about this battle being easier than it should have been. Come to think of it, Gardenia has several problems with evolution, as her second Pokemon is a level 20 Cherim. Cheruby isn't supposed to evolve until 25, so it's pretty clear we're dealing with another creationist. Whatever she did to force an evolution didn't help, as Charm goes down without getting a hit in. Gardenia's final Pokemon is a level 22 Roserade. She hits hard with Magical Leaf, but a crit Psybeam one-shots her and earns us the Forest Badge. Two down, six to go. Okay, what's next? Oh god, it's another Galactic Commander. 
Welcome to attempt number 4653 at beating Jupiter. I refused to level up here. I knew it was doable at level 26, so I just kept trying. Zubat does have bite and at level 21 she can do some damage. I just have to set up three barriers to have a chance though. Once we've set them up, we can one-shot Zubat with Psybeam. With our defense maxed out, we are only taking 10 HP of damage from Night Slash against Skuntank. As a dark type, we can't use Psybeam on her, so we're stuck with just return. That's not great as our base attack is just 25. So we're just gonna tickle Skuntank until Sunday can do some damage. Tickle lowers the defense and attack of the opponent, so we have the added benefit of weakening her Night Slash while softening her up for return. Even after lowering her defense 5 stages, it still takes 3 shots to knock Skuntank out. Sunday survived on 2 HP, but in a minute that nightmarish battle will seem like a cakewalk. Before we get to that though, we have another run-in with Cynthia where she forces us to take an egg that we clearly don't want. Once we reach Heart Home City, we have a third gym battle to contend with. The leader, Fantina, has a team of ghost types, and Sunday doesn't really like that. This battle took more time than I'd care to mention. Once again, I didn't want to overlevel. I knew my junior could do this at level 32, and I was going to persist until I got that damn relic badge. I may be too stubborn for my own good. Anyway, let's get into it. Fantina leads off with Duskull, and straight away we put down a substitute. We get lucky as it goes for Will-O-Wisp, and then we get a crit before she can break our substitute. A lot of time went into this strategy, and that is absolutely necessary. She always sends out her Mismagius next and fires off a Shadow Ball, so we need our substitute alive and kicking. She does take out our substitute, as expected, so with the last of our HP, we throw up another. The insane sequence of luck that followed was exactly what we needed. Fantina's final Pokemon Haunter has Sucker Punch, so we can't win this battle if Mismagius destroys our substitute. For some reason, I can only assume it was pity, she went for back-to-back -back Psy Beams instead of Shadow Ball or Magic Leaf. After hitting herself in confusion, we knock out Miss Magius, and finally, the battle is as good as won. Haunter breaks our substitute, but one super effective side beam knocks her out and earns us our third badge. If I never see Fantina again, it'll be too soon. Thankfully, our next opponent is our good friend Barry. As our close personal friend, he has set up his team with two Pokemon weak to psychic types. Staravia, Buizel, Roselia, and Monferno don't put up much of a fight. We win the battle and can move on quickly. Thank you, Barry. When we reach Veilstone City, we head straight to the department store and buy the TM for Thunder, teaching it to Sunday in place of return. That should help us deal with some of those pesky dark types. It isn't super effective, but at least it's a special attack. With Mime Jr.'s attack stat, return was pretty much entirely useless. Then it's time to head to the gym, and we're in luck because it's a fighting type gym. Unfortunately for us, Two of Maylene's three Pokemon has secondary typings that resist Psychic, so even when things go well for us, it isn't that great. Once again, we start off the battle by maxing out our defense with Barrier, and then move on to attacking. Meditite was up first and got off a few hits while we were putting up Barriers, but Sunday dealt with her pretty easily. Machoke was Maylene's only pure fighting type, so one Psybeam was more than enough to knock him out. Then we have the reason for maxing out Sunday's defense. Lucario. He hits like a truck, and it takes three Psybeams to knock him out. Thanks to our raised defense, we're able to take down Lucario before falling to Metal Claw. With that, we can add the Cobble Badge to our case. Before entering the Pistoria Gym, Barry catches up with us and after delivering a pretty bizarre speech, insists on battling. With Psybeam and Thunder in our arsenal, we have super effective moves against all four members of his team. What a good friend! During the battle, we level up to 39 and learn Psychic. With our rival defeated, we can take on the Pistoria Gym Leader. Crasher Wake leads off with his Gyarados, which isn't an issue because we've got Thunder now. It's an easy one-shot, but his ace is up next. At level 37, Floatzel is fast enough to outspeed Sunday, and with Crunch in his moveset, we're in a spot of bother. Luckily, Thunder lands and we take him out in one. Quagsire is up last, and his secondary ground typing makes Thunder pointless. The Citrus Berry we equipped got Sunday's health up just enough to survive a Rock Tomb, and then we take him out with Psychic. Wake gives us the Fen Badge to make it 5 out of 8. Then things just go crazy. Team Galactic starts setting off bombs all over Sinnoh, which seems a bit extreme. After we take down a couple of bomb-planting Galactic Grunts, we're set to deal with the Galactic Boss, Cyrus. 
Let me just get this out of the way. I don't like Cyrus. I would go as far as to say, I hate the Team Galactic leader. This first battle with Cyrus took a really long time. He leans off with Sneasel, and in a Mime Jr. challenge run, Sneasel is a nightmare. That doesn't even seem real, Sneasel is not a good Pokemon. Combining speed with dark typing isn't fun. What I eventually settled on is replacing Substitute with Drain Punch just to take out this damn Sneasel. I really didn't want to lose Substitute, but it just seemed necessary here. Even with that though, we couldn't get through this battle without an opening critical hit. We can one-shot Murkrow and Golbat with Thunder and Psychic, but Murkrow is faster than Sunday. He has Faint Attack, and we need a good chunk of HP to survive that hit, so the crit was necessary. Anyway, we get past him after a long time, and we can finally move on to Canalave City. When we try to cross the bridge to head to the Canalave Gym, Barry stops us for another battle. Even though his team is made up of five Pokemon who are all weak to either Psychic or Thunder, he destroyed Sunday on our first attempt. It basically came down to the speed of one Pokemon. Heracross has Night Slash, and when he can hit Sunday first, we can't win. We needed to level up to 46, and then hope Star to let off with Double Team instead of Takedown. Eventually, everything came together, and we beat our rival again. And then we had another incredibly difficult battle. This challenge is really not easy, guys. Trying to keep Sunday's level down has made it approximately 4 million times harder. If I just let loose and leveled up whenever we needed it, Mime Jr. would probably be level 70 right now. Anyway, the Canalave City Gym Leader Byron specializes in Steel-type Pokemon. That's not great for Mime Jr., but she's such a beast that a crit psychic still took out Magneton. Before the battle, we replaced Drain Punch with Grass Knot to help with Bastiodon and Steelix. Even though Steel resists Grass, both Pokemon have secondary typings that are weak to it. Grass Knot's power is based on weight, which means it'll hit for 100 power against the 150 kilo Bastiodon, and 120 power against the 400 kilo Steelix. We got so lucky in this battle that I almost don't believe it. Between crits, iron defenses, and sandstorms, we basically couldn't lose. That doesn't change the fact that all of the previous tries were seriously painful. The mind badge is finally ours. Six down, two to go. After our triumph over Byron, we have to head to Lake Valor to battle the last of the Galactic Commanders, Saturn. Having a Toxicroak as his ace is bad news for him, but great news for us. This battle was great. Sunday deserved an easy one after the last few she's had to deal with. The next few don't look promising either, honestly. Back at Lake Verity, Mars is waiting for us after taking out Dawn. I actually thought that this one wouldn't be too hard now that we know Psychic, but I was wrong. Perugly is a tank whenever you take her on. I just had to run this one until she went for Hypnosis and missed. Eventually, we got lucky and made it to Bronzor. It's powerless to stop us, and with Mars down, we're free to head to Snowpoint City. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is good, an Ice-type gym should be a walk in the park for Sunday. And in theory, you're right, it shouldn't be too hard. But then there was Sneasel. The gym trainers gave me enough trouble, but Candice is a different story entirely. Our first run at the Snowpoint Gym Leader doesn't exactly go well. At level 55, Sunday can't outspeed Candice's Sneasel and goes down to two faint attacks after missing a thunder. This took a lot of tries, and eventually we had to get up to level 62. Once my junior is at that level, she can outspeed Sneasel and one thunder is enough to take her out. This isn't the first time we've gotten past Candice's Sneasel, but Frostlass is up next, and her secondary typing is Ghost, so that's not great. Usually she let off with Shadow Ball, but this time for some reason she went for Double Team. She still got a hit in before going down to Psychic, but at least we're above half health. I'm not sure if we would have made it through this battle without Sunday hitting a crit Psychic on a Bomb of Snow. Her Woodhammer hits hard, but we might have lived through it. That doesn't matter now though. Mime Jr. one-shots Candice's Pile of Swine, and she gives us the Icicle Badge. With that badge in our possession, we can use Rock Climb to reach Lake Acuity. By the time we arrive, Jupiter has already crushed Barry, so we have to head to Veilstone City to deal with Team Galactic. At Galactic HQ, we have some refreshingly easy battles against Cyrus and Saturn. We get a bit lucky against Cyrus' Sneasel, but his Haunchcrow and Crobat both go down easily. Having Psychic and Thunder on Sunday is really nice. Well, it is when Thunder makes contact, at least. Randomly electrocuting people and Pokemon 50 feet away from our target isn't particularly helpful. 
Saturn is still completely terrible, which is a nice change of pace from the other commanders. His Golbat, Bronzor, and Toxicroak don't pose a threat to Sunday, who knocks them all out without taking a hit. Obviously, Mars and Jupiter were feeling left out, so our next major battle is a double battle against the pair with Barry on our side. The two commanders have given us lots of trouble so far, but we can take advantage of the double battle format if Barry cooperates. For the Mount Coronet battle, they both have a level 44 Bronzor and a level 44 Golbat to go along with their ace. Perugly and Skuntank are both dangerous though. After setting up three barriers, we put our plan in motion, taking out Mars's Bronzor and Golbat until she's down to just Perugly. With Sunday at level 68, one Psychic is enough to body the Redhead Star Pokemon. By knocking out Perugly, we've isolated Jupiter and we can just make it past Skuntank without a second Pokemon attacking us. Golbat goes down to one Psychic and then Giratina appears and opens up the Distortion World. After a confusing trip through, we make it to Cyrus… again. Lots of Team Galactic happening right now. Taking him on at level 68 wasn't a great idea. His final team features three powerful Dark types, so we needed to do some serious grinding, but once we have, we made our way back through the Distortion World to try again. At level 75, one Thunder destroys each of Cyrus' first two Pokemon, Houndoom and Honchkrow. Unfortunately, Cyrus' ace is Weavile, and with 125 base speed and 120 base attack, that's kind of terrifying. He goes for a fake out Night Slash combo to start, taking Sunday down to 50 HP. We get lucky here with Thunder paralyzing Weavile. That means Mime Jr. can outspeed him and land a second Thunder before Night Slash takes us down. We're not out of the woods yet though. There are only a handful of Pokemon faster than Weavile by this point in the series, and Crobat is one of them. So straight away, we know we're going to have to tank a hit. Cross Poison takes Sunday down to 8 HP and Cyrus still has one Pokemon left. Gyarados is quad weak to electric moves and we will outspeed him. This battle all comes down to whether or not we can hit Thunder. It has 70% accuracy, but we've already landed 4 from 4 in this battle. The odds of hitting 5 Thunders in a row is about 1 in 6. Mime Jr. is incredible though. Thunder connects and we've finally taken down Cyrus. That took a long time. There's one more thing to do before leaving the Distortion World though. Sunday has to test her medal against the legendary Ghost Dragon Pokemon, G- Oh, it's dead already? Good, good work, Sunday. Good work. After leaving the Distortion World, it's time to head to Sunny Shore City to go for our final gym badge. The gym leader, Volkner, unfortunately has to deal with us at a really high level. His team consists of a level 46 Jolteon, a level 46 Raichu, a level 48 Luxray, and a level 50 Electivire. With Sunday at level 76, I don't think he ever stood a chance of winning. Jolteon, Raichu, and Luxray all went down to just one Psychic, but Electivire did manage to just about survive. A Thunder Punch does deal a fair amount of damage, but he goes down to a second Psychic. We're given the Beacon Badge as a reward, and we can finally head to the Pokemon League. Before we could challenge the Elite Four though, we've got to take on Barry one last time. Let's be honest here guys, you all know Sunday is about to slice through Barry's team like a hot knife through butter. But I think we need to take a second to appreciate our good friend Barry. When everyone was working together to make this challenge as tough as possible, our neighbour kept catching Pokemon we could easily beat. So thank you Barry. Okay, now let's finish watching a Mime Jr. destroy a Staraptor, a Heracross, a Floatzel, a Roserade, a Snorlax and an Infernape. Only Snorlax survived a hit and Barry went down incredibly easily. With no more roadblocks in our way, it's time to take on the Elite Four. First up, it's Aaron. With a Bug-type team, this could be a seriously tough battle. He leads off with his level 49 Yanmega, and unfortunately, Sunday misses her first Thunder. He uses back-to-back -back double teams thanks to speed boost, but we manage to connect with Thunder, which knocks him out. It was definitely a stroke of luck that Yanmega never tried to attack, and we ride that luck against Scizor when a crit Thunder takes him down in one. Aaron's Vespaquen is out third, and the secondary flying typing helps us out a lot as Thunder one-shots again. Drapion is next, and although he lives through our first attack, he does get paralyzed. It didn't really make any difference in the end, as Drapion hit with Cross Poison, but it's not enough to stop Sunday. A second Thunder is more than enough to deal with him and force Aaron's last Pokemon out. Heracross is part fighting, so Psychic obliterates him and wins us the battle. Next up is Bertha. 
Her team of crown types is the reason we've kept Grass Knot in our moveset for so long. Four of her Pokemon are weak to Grass types, with three of them being quad weak. Her level 50 Whiskash starts the battle off, and even though Grass Knot's only 40 power thanks to her low weight, it still wipes her out in one. Hippowdon's up next, and as a pure ground type, we know we're not getting that quad effective move. But with a name like the Heavyweight Pokemon, you know Grass Knot is going to hit hard. At 120 power, the super effective hit takes Hippowdon down in one. Rhyperia doesn't stand any chance of living through a Grass Knot, but Bertha's fourth Pokemon, Gliscor, isn't weak to grass. Unfortunately for her, Sunday's a beast, so one psychic knocks her out. Golem is yet another Pokemon heavy enough to incur the full power of Grass Knot. It's another easy one shot, and Bertha is done. The third member of the Elite Four, Flint, has a team of fire types. Sunday knocks out Houndoom, Rapidash, and Infernape without getting hit, leaving just Flareon and Magmortar. Flint's level 55 Flareon survives through Psychic and unleashes an overheat that takes Sunday below half health. Magmortar is level 57 and after living through Psychic, probably could have won the battle with Flamethrower. Thankfully, he went for Solar Beam instead, and Mime Jr. finished him off. With Flint down and out, we can move on to the final member of the Elite Four, Lucian. Before we start the battle though, we level up Sunday using the two rare candies we found, and then teach her Shadow Ball in place of Grass Knot. Lucian sends out Mr. Mime first, and immediately it's a battle for the ages. Father versus Child. You think of Rourke versus Byron. Ash versus... Oh god, never mind. I figured he'd lead off with something defensive, so set up a barrier to help against Bronzong and Gallade later in the battle. One Shadow Ball takes out Mr. Mime, and Lucian sends out his Espeon. Once again, one Shadow Ball does the job here. His level 56 Alakazam is out third, and sends an Energy Ball Sunday's way before getting blown away by another Shadow Ball. Lucian's fourth Pokemon is Bronzong, and we get lucky when Shadow Ball lowers its special defense. That stat drop makes Bronzong's Calm Mind pointless, and a second hit finishes it off. Gallade is up last, and with our defense raised and decent HP left, we're in good shape. A Stone Edge from Gallade can't take out Sunday, and she ends the battle with another Shadow Ball. Mime Jr. has taken down the Elite Four, and now only the champion remains. Cynthia is the Sinnoh region champion, and she has a full team of six. Her level 58 Spiritomb starts out the battle, but Thunder paralyzes her immediately. The paralysis prevents her from attacking, and a second Thunder KOs her before she can even get a hit in. Lucario's second, and after surviving Sunday's first Psychic, he messes up by missing Stone Edge. Cynthia uses a full restore, allowing us to get in back-to-back -back hits and take down Lucario. Next in line is Garchomp. At level 62, she outspeeds Sunday and hits with Dragon Rush, which takes us down below 50 HP. Psychic does a fair amount of damage, and if we'd landed a crit, it would have taken her out. Garchomp lives though, and an earthquake takes Sunday down. Our first attempt at Cynthia was a failure, and I felt like a lot of grinding was required, so we went back through the Elite Four once we'd gotten well into the 90s. Weirdly enough, using Dark Pulse, Spiritomb actually dealt some significant damage this time around. She goes down to two Shadow Balls before Lucario falls to Psychic once again. Nothing's changed here, Garchomp's up third, but now we're leveled up high enough to outspeed her. Psychic can't knock Garchomp out though, so we have to take an Earthquake. It knocks Sunday down to 21 HP, and then she knocks out the Dragon with Psychic. We've made it to Cynthia's final three Pokémon, but we are not in good shape. Her level 58 Milotic comes in fourth, but is instantly electrocuted by Sunday's Thunder. Then we have Togekiss, who falls to the exact same fate. We've made it to Cynthia's final Pokemon, and we're still alive. Rose Raid is up last, and she can't live through Psychic. Her secondary poison typing hurts her too much, and Cynthia is beaten. The champion is defeated, and we can officially say that you can beat Pokemon Platinum with only Mime Jr. Sunday's inducted into the Hall of Fame and the credits roll to signal the end of our journey. This challenge took a lot of time, and it was incredibly difficult, but I'm so happy we got it done. Pokemon Platinum is a tough game to begin with, and taking it on with one Psychic type is not easy. Mime Jr. was brilliant to use though. A lot of those battles took some serious planning, but I'm glad we were able to keep Sunday's level down for most of the challenge at least. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.